Welcome again to this Bible study, this session again. We're in uh, 2 Corinthians and we are in chapter 5. As we begin, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we do uh, thank you for the opportunity to study your word, Lord. I'm grateful for those that you send to watch this video. And I pray that uh, uh, those who hear your word and the, the teaching here are benefited by that, Lord, that you'll uh, bless us with an opening of the heart and an opening of the mind to hear what you would teach us through Paul's writing here to the church at Corinth. Lord, we do have those at our church and those connected to our church that we lift up in prayer, Lord. We we lift up these names. We lift up Jen and Joey, Lord, and ask you to continue to heal uh, Jen and uh, provide Joey with strength as he continues to care for her. Uh, Lord, we ask you to be with Beverly, who's uh, still hurting some from her uh, her side, Lord, that you'll give her wisdom in how to how to deal with that uh, that that pain issue that the doctor says is uh, diverticulitis. Lord, we ask you to be with Micah, the young man from Chapel Hill, who's uh, still uh, trying to fight his way back from the uh, the football injury he received a few weeks ago. Uh, Lord, be with uh, Ron Walters, Lord, our, our brother in Christ, who's uh, uh, been dealing with some blood pressure issues. And we ask you to be with Linda Davis, who's been sick at home, and Evelyn Stone, who, uh, as, uh, as far as I know at this point, still in the hospital, Lord. Uh, just be with both of them and be with Jerry Davis as he uh, uh, takes care of both of them, Lord, to provide strength and healing for that family. Lord, we ask you to be with uh, um, the Sanders family, the loss of uh, Monty's mother, uh, uh, Virginia. Lord, that uh, they uh, be strengthened. Lord, be protected from any sickness in their family. Lord, we just ask you to be with uh, George Jones. That's uh, Lynn's dad, Lord, who's uh, undergoing surgery this week. Lord, uh, we offer up uh, uh, Samantha, who's been uh, uh, dealing with this uh, cancer in her knee, Lord, that you'll provide a, a healing touch for her. And Lord, be also with uh, Margaret, Al Margaret Alsop, who's also uh, uh, battling cancer at this time. Lord, remember uh, Scott uh, uh, Reed, who's uh, uh, dealing with this ALS issue. Lord, we offer up uh, a Sawyer, that's the... Uh, Sister Faye's uh, great-grandson who had a, an accident on a swing set at two years old or three years old that required a, a surgery. So, Lord, we ask for healing touch for him. Lord, we enter into a time of uh, concern for our nation. Lord, as the election looms upon us, Lord, we have another turn in the uh, uh, the history of our nation as uh, uh, we've uh, uh, experienced the loss of uh, uh, another Supreme Court Justice, and now we ask you to give our uh, our nation wisdom and how to fill that uh, that, Supreme, that Supreme Court uh, uh, seat, Lord. Just uh, give our our national leaders wisdom and uh, give them uh, the discernment to uh, appoint a uh, uh, an appropriate judge, Lord, a God honoring judge to that seat, uh, one that will glorify you and honor you and decisions that are made uh, based on uh, the court. Uh, cases that come before the Supreme Court, Lord, we ask you to uh, uh, give our nation wisdom and uh, how to fill that seat and who to fill it with. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As we enter into chapter 5, uh, uh, Paul uh, will confirm for us the bodily resurrection of the dead, and he'll speak a great deal, a great deal in regard to the resurrection bodies that we will receive. Uh, as a result of all of that, at the end of the chapter, he uh, um, tells us that we will all stand before uh, the judgment seat of Christ. Now, as we enter into chapter 5, Paul uh, spent some time confirming for the Corinthians and for us uh, uh, the resurrection of the dead, and he speaks to some degree of the uh, uh, the resurrection body that we will, will receive. He, he tells us that we will all stand in judgment before the judgment seat of Christ. And then at the end of the uh, the chapter, he speaks a good bit about uh, what it means to be reconciled uh, to God. That's a, a word we hear often in scripture, this word reconciled. Uh, so let's get right into the word of God. Let's, uh, let's just read one verse, the opening verse, uh, verse 1. Uh, for we know that 
if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So now when Paul speaks of our earthly house, when he speaks there of uh, this tent, uh, as, as he calls it, what he's referring to there is our, our physical body. He's referring to the human body. Uh, that would have been a, a fairly easy concept for Paul's original readers of this letter to understand because nomadic people were relatively common in that day and time. People that moved about lived in, in tents. In fact, Scripture tells us Paul himself uh, was a tent maker. That's what he uh, his, his trade, so to speak, would have been. He was known to, to, to make tents. So we had a, an understanding of what it meant to live inside a, a, a tent. Uh, he's saying to these uh, um, these Corinthian believers, and we need to understand here that Paul is writing to uh, those who are believers in Jesus Christ. He says, uh, uh, you know that one of these days, uh, uh, your house, your tent, your, your earthly body will be destroyed. So he's speaking there of, of the time that you will die. He says there'll come a day when this physical body will pass away, when it will die, when it will be destroyed. This uh, this tent's going to fall down. Your earthly house is going to be uh, demolished. Uh, he says, uh, uh, I, I, I. he says, uh, when that happens, uh, uh, you will receive from God uh, another dwelling. He says a building. He says you'll receive a building that's not made with hands. And uh, I noticed there uh, the word building. Uh, he says your earthly tent, that flimsy tent you're living in, that uh, flimsy, flimsy, uh, that that uh, uh, not so strong house that you're living in, it's going to be replaced by uh, a building. And Paul's intention there is that uh, uh, this ragged tent that we're going to that we're living in now, it's going to be replaced by uh, a building that is much more substantial. Our, our earthly bodies are going to be replaced by uh, a, a glorified body, a heavenly body, as it's called in Scripture, uh, that is going to be much more solid. It's going to be uh, a body that is much more secure. It's going to be a body that is much more permanent than the one that we live in now. And that body uh, won't be a body that's made with hands. It'll, it'll of course, be a body that's made by God. Now, um, Paul goes on to say that, and as I read this, I, I think this is what Paul has in mind. All of this reminds me of the uh, the Israelite children when they left Egypt, how they were in the wilderness. And, and when they were there, they built what was called the tabernacle, which was the uh, uh, the dwelling of God. And it was a tent. I mean, they basically folded it up and carried it with them everywhere they went. Whenever they'd stop, they'd get it all back out, set it all up again. Uh, so it was a it was a tent. But there came a day when they had received the promised land, and, and when they had dwelled in the promised land, when they went to the place that God had designed for them to go, uh, they replaced that temporary tent that they carried with them in the wilderness with a uh, a more physical building. Uh, a, a solid building. It was a temple. It was built in the time of Solomon, and it was built out of a stone, and it was covered in gold, and it was a very uh, a massive structure, a glory, a glorious structure, um, all all built for the glory of God. So, I think in the in the same respect, we when we move into the promised land that God has for us, and and all of that in Israel, of course, was a foreshadowing of our our entrance into heaven, but. Uh, when we make that move into the promised land into heaven, then we will receive a, a, a glorified body, a glorified building that's going to replace this temporal tent that we're living in. Um, uh, Paul goes on to say that uh, in verses 2 and 3, uh, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is uh, from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we uh, shall not be found naked. Uh, Paul, Paul says, look, we groan earnestly. We're, uh, we as believers, we have this true, deep desire to escape this, uh, uh, this tent that we're living in and, and, and to receive that new habitation, that uh, 
that new dwelling place, that new uh, body that God had prepared for us in heaven. Uh, the transformation that takes place when uh, we receive our, our glorified body should be something that every Christian is truly looking forward to. It should be a, a time of great joy, something that brings joy into our hearts, something that we're really desiring. Uh, Paul says we have this hope. Uh, we have this hope, and it's a hope that we won't be found naked. Uh, the the pagans of Paul's day, those who had their uh, uh, they believed in the false gods that they've been taught that when a person dies, uh, that the spirit is released into some kind of a ethereal form, that it uh, uh, kind of just comes out as a, a wispy, uh, unsubstantial kind of a state. And Paul's, uh, Paul's assuring us and, and the Corinthians uh, that the body that we're going to receive uh, when we receive our, our new body, it's a real body, it's a, it's a spiritual body. Uh, but it's much that's much different than our our physical bodies. But at the same time, it it has substance. It's a uh, it's a body that's uh, very real, and it's not just some uh, some fog that's floating around or cloudish thing, something you can see through. It's a it's a it's a real body, not a physical body, a spiritual body. But at the same time, it it's a body that has substance. We're not going to be found naked in heaven. We're going to be in a our spirit is going to be covered in a in a spiritual body. He says in verse 4, For we who are in this tent grown, uh, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but uh, further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by, by life. Uh, we, we as believers uh, uh, who are currently walking around in these physical earthly tents, these earthly houses, these physical bodies, uh, we as believers, we can't hardly wait uh, to get those glorified bodies we often talk about. And that's not because we want to die and leave this tent behind so much as it's because uh, we want to experience the fullness uh, uh, of eternal life. We want to uh, we want to put off the mortal, the, the, the temporal life, and we want to put on the eternal life. And we if we uh, when we do that, we get this. Uh, we put off this temporal tent and we put on an eternal uh, clothing, an eternal building. We, uh, we move into an eternal body that uh, is designed for eternal life. And uh, Paul says in verse 5, Now he who has uh, uh, prepared us uh, for this very thing is God, uh, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Uh, so Paul's saying there that uh, the one who's planned all of this out, the one who is going to bring this to fruition in our life is God himself. He's the one who's prepared our, our spiritual body. He's the one that's ready for us to come into heaven. I think God is at, uh, equally anticipating our, our entrance into heaven. Uh, Paul says he gave us the Holy Spirit who is now indwelling uh, this tent that we're living in. Uh, as, a, as a guarantee of the promise that he's made to us that we will be resurrected from the dead and we will receive this uh, this body that he's promised us. And I think I'll read that and I really believe it's, it's isn't it nice to know that you're not living in this uh, earthly tent as Paul puts it alone, that you're uh, as a believer in Jesus Christ, that you're uh, you're not alone in this tent, that the Holy Spirit is living living in this body with you. Um, the true believer that the Spirit's living inside your uh, your earthly tent in your earthly house. That's, that's uh, just an amazing thought to me. and It, it brings a, a kind of a gladness to my heart. I hope it does for you as well. Paul says in verses 6 through 8, uh, So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But we are confident, yes, well, pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And so as long as uh, we are in these earthly human bodies, as long as we're at home in this physical body, our, our, uh, um, we're away from God. And, and that means we're away from the fullness of God. That, that doesn't mean that we don't have any access to God or we don't have any contact with God uh, while we're in this human body. 
uh, contrary to that, that we, we have prayer, we have uh, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, so God is living in us even while we're not in his presence. Uh, we have fellowship with God through the scriptures, we have fellowship with God through our prayer, but we have fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit, so we are in, in effect in the presence of God, but not in the fullness of God, not as long as we're in this physical body. We won't experience the fullness of God until until we leave this earthly tent behind. Um, uh, Paul says that uh, we live by faith. He says as long as we are in this body, we're, we're, we're living by faith. We're walking by faith, as he puts it. Anytime scripture refers to walking uh, as Christ or, or walking in the light or walking by faith, it's talking about how we live. It's talking about living. So he says we live by faith. Uh, it's a lot easier. A lot easier, and I, I think most of you will agree with me, it's a lot easier uh, to live this life if we're living in, in, in faith of the future to come, if we're living in sight of eternity, in sight, if we have this, this blessed hope, as Scripture calls it, that our faith leads us into, a, into knowing that everything that's going on around us is only temporary, and that there's an eternal state uh, that's prepared for us in uh, the future. He's saying, look, we always need to live with the goal of heaven in sight. Uh, Billy Graham tells a story, and, I, and I've always liked this story about how there was a college student who came to him once and asked him after he had given a, a, a lecture, I think, at a college. He asked Billy Graham, uh, isn't all this business about heaven just a, a form of escapism? And, and Billy Graham, uh, uh, he responded to that young man by saying, in a sense, yes, uh, and before the devil gets through with this world, we're all going to be looking for the exit sign. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I think that's kind of what Paul's saying here. Uh, we, uh, we, we shouldn't feel too at home in this world, and we should be looking for the exit sign, uh, and, and we will find it. There'll be a day when we will leave this world, and we will be in the presence of the Lord. So we live in hope, Paul says. We live in, we walk in faith. We live in that faith uh, of an eternal heaven, and, and uh, of a, uh, we live in the hope of an eternal body. And, and we as Christians, we don't live with our hope placed in this world. Uh, there are a lot of people, I believe, in this day and time who live in the hopes that uh, uh, that this uh, this world is going to become more moral. This world is going to become more God pleasing. This and we do have that hope at a, at a certain human level, and, and it's possible there could be revival. I'm not saying that doesn't exist, but our our true hope is in the eternity that follows this world. We uh, we don't place our faith in the world. We place our faith. We live in the faith of an eternity in, in heaven with God. Uh, Paul says it's going to be far better, far better when our spirit, our, our human spirit, leaves this body and... Uh, um, comes into the full presence of God. We we shouldn't live in hope of what we see with the natural eye in this world. We live in the hope of what eternity holds for us in the future. He says in verse nine. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. Uh, he's saying, therefore, since all of these things that I I just told you are true, we we should be living a life. Uh, that is pleasing to God, whether we're living in this tent or we're living in our eternal tent, whatever our state of being is, we as believers in God and Jesus Christ, we were saved, we should constantly be living our our life in a way that's pleasing to God. Our, our goal is to please God. Uh, Peter, uh, Paul, excuse me, is basically saying here, it's a, it's right and it's a noble thing for you as a believer uh, to strive for a life of excellence, spiritual excellence before God. Uh, whether you're here on this earth or whether you're at home in heaven, uh, that goal doesn't change, that uh, you should be uh, trying to, uh, you know, we, we all understand that we're not going to achieve spiritual perfection as long as we're in this body and this world. We're not going to achieve that spiritual perfection until we are indeed out of this body and in the presence of the Lord. But uh, even in this life, we, we should always be working toward 
uh, that goal, working towards spiritual perfection. We're, we're constantly moving forward in our life. A friend of mine recently said that even if you stumble, you still stumble forward. You don't, you don't stumble backwards, and you don't stumble if you're, uh, if you're standing still. You're moving toward the goal of spiritual perfection always in your life. And there are going to be times when you stumble in that, but you won't fall. And uh, But you will keep moving forward. Even if you're stumbling, you're stumbling forward. You're not stopping and you don't fall over backwards. You, you stumble forward, you keep moving forward. You keep moving toward that goal of living a life that's pleasing to God. Uh, why? Well, Paul answers that question for us in verses 10 and 11. He says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, that each one may receive uh, the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, uh, we, we pers persuade men, uh, but we are well known to God, and I also trust we are uh, well known in your conscience. Uh, even, even as a true believer, uh, you will one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We, we should never be uh, fooled into believing that only sinners will be judged by Christ. It, we all stand before uh, the judgment seat of Christ, even as saved believers. And when we do, uh, we won't be judged according to our sins, because as true believers, our sins have been forgiven us. Uh, but God will judge us, and Christ will judge us from the judgment seat. And he'll judge us, judge us based on uh, what we have done in this body, what we've done in this life uh, since the time of our, our salvation, since the time of our conversion. When, when Paul says uh, uh, you'll be judged based on your deeds, whether good or bad, uh, the Greek wording there uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't imply that we'll be uh, judged on our, our non-sinful acts versus our sinful acts. Uh, that, all that sinful stuff was dealt with and, and forgiven and, and, and covered and, uh, and and taken away because of Jesus' uh, sacrifice for us on the cross. What, what Paul's saying here is our, our, in our earthly life, uh, what we've done in this body, in this time uh, of our life, all, that's going to be judged by Christ based on the activities that we've, uh, we've done that lead us to eternal reward. These, these things that we do in this body that are of value to God, for those things, Jesus says, when I come, I'm bringing my reward with me. So he's going to reward us for the things that we've done in this body that are of value to the kingdom of God. And, and all of those things that uh, we did that were of no value to the kingdom of God, those things are going to be placed upon the uh, upon the foundation, Scripture tells us. And it, uh, the fire is going to be passed over that. The fires of judgment are going to pass over Everything we've done in our life and everything that was of value is going to be left behind uh, on the foundation, as, as Paul puts it in other writings, and, and, and everything else is going to be burned away. All of the, the wood and the hay and the straw in our life is going to be burned away, and all the, the precious stones and the, uh, uh, the gold and the silver, all of that's going to be left uh, on, the, uh, on the foundation. Uh, so that's, that's the way our judgment will work as believers in Jesus Christ. We're going to be based on our, uh, on our, our works. Uh, we're going to receive uh, rewards for that. Scripture tells us it's possible that by uh, things that we do, we can lose some of those rewards. It's possible we don't earn any rewards or, or few rewards. So we should be living in a way that we are pleasing to God that will result in our receiving uh, these eternal rewards, which Scripture calls crowns, uh, and, and again, we're told in Revelation that we'll cast those crowns before uh, the feet of Jesus, and that, that should be our goal to, uh, um, to, um, to achieve those uh, eternal rewards that are pleasing to our Lord, pleasing to our God. We're not doing that uh, for our own sake, not so I can put on my crown and parade around and say, hey, look at me. The, the reason we want to receive that reward, the reason we want to, when we stand before Christ as our judge, uh, we're, we want to be pleasing to him. We want to be those who stand before the judgment seat of Christ and uh, who Christ wraps his arms around and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's, that's for his sake, not our own so much. It's just, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the judgment seat of Christ for us. It's not a place of 
by a punishment it's a place of reward um uh, paul uh, as he comes to verse 11 says uh um uh, because my ministry because uh my ministry partners and i and again we come to this point where paul's defending his ministry against those false teachers that had risen up within Corinth. And we need to understand that uh, uh, one of Paul's main points for writing this letter is to do that, to combat those false teachers that have come into the church in Corinth. But when we get to verse 11, Paul is uh, saying there basically, because my ministry partners and I uh, know all of this that, that I'm laying out for you here, because God knows us and because you there in Corinth uh, experienced our ministry while we were actually there with you and you know our conscience and you know uh, you know our heart you know our motivations for what we teach is right uh, then you need to really be listening to us rather than those false teachers that are there in Corinth uh, Paul's, Paul's using the word persuade there he wants to persuade them the, the Greek word for, for persuade there uh, uh, means to make someone understand uh, that there's a better way, that there's a more favorable way. So what Paul's trying to do here is he's saying, look, my, my ministry, and again, he's, he's writing and speaking for not only himself, he's writing for uh, people like Timothy and Titus and, uh, and Luke and uh, um, uh, Silas and, and some of these others that have been with him in his, in his ministry. Uh, he's saying, when we're, we're pre presenting to you a better way. We're presenting to you the right way. We're presenting to you God's uh, God's word. We're presenting to you the truth. Uh, he's saying we, we want to persuade you of all of that, and we want you. Uh, he's saying look, we have a, res a, a sincere respect for God. We have a, a terror of God. We have a fear of, uh, of God, and and God knows us. He knows our hearts, and you know our hearts, and. And you know that what we're teaching you here is right. If you examine the, the Word of God and you examine your own conscience and if you uh, understand uh, the ministry that Paul and his, uh, his, his uh, compadres were, were bringing to the Corinthian churches, that you know we're right, you're going you're gonna to listen to us rather than listen to those false teachers who are trying to teach you a different way. Uh, we're going to going to close this Bible study there for this time. It may be a little short uh, this session, but uh, Paul moves on from there to speak of reconciliation, uh, to be reconciled to God, and that's, uh, that's an important lesson for us. I don't want to feel rushed through that, uh, so I'm going to close this lesson for now, and uh, we're going to spend some time on that the next time we come together as to what it means to be reconciled uh, to God. Uh, so if you will, uh, spend a few moments in prayer with me as we close this session. Uh, Lord, we do uh, thank you for Paul's teaching here. Lord, we do ask you to, uh, uh, to to drive these points home with us, Lord, to let us understand that there will come a time when this earthly body will uh, will cease, when this tent will collapse, uh, uh, when our house will fall, this physical body. And, and Lord, we, uh, we don't fear that because we know that teaching here that when this body ceases that there will be a heavenly body uh, for us in the future that is a building that is much more uh, glorious than we can imagine a body that is much more substantial a body that is more real even than the one we uh, we exist in today this body is just a foreshadowing of the amazing uh, body a uh, spiritual body that we're going to receive uh, when we receive that body and Lord we look forward to that day let us uh, let us look forward to that with anticipation Lord let us live in faith knowing that that's your promise and that the Holy Spirit's been given to us as a guarantee that uh, you're going to keep that promise Lord uh, uh, let us understand that in the meantime as we uh, look forward to that eternity that we are to be living lives that are God that are God pleasing that please you that as our Lord, Lord, we just bow down to you as supreme ruler over our lives. We we want to we want to learn every scrap of scripture that we can learn, and we want to be uh, obedient to that word that you've given us, Lord. Let us live uh, a life of not only faith but a life of obedience, Lord, to your to your lordship over our lives. Uh, Lord, we ask you to protect us from the uh, uh, 
deceitful nature of uh, uh, deceiving nature of, uh, of those false teachers that would uh, try to lead us astray, Lord. Uh, just uh, as Paul saying here, let us be persuaded by your word to uh, to walk in the right path, Lord. Get on that difficult way that leads to that narrow gate, uh, Lord. That leads us into eternal life, where we will receive that glorified body, uh, Lord. We look forward to that day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope you found this uh, of some benefit to you, and uh, do uh, ask you to. Uh, uh, just continue to pray for the church in Midland, pray for the churches around the world. Uh, we should be praying without uh, without ceasing. Scripture tells us in your prayers, don't neglect to pray for the churches and uh, those who are put in uh, ministerial roles, uh, those who are working within the churches. Um, we all need your prayers. Uh, just just remember uh, remember me in your prayers and, and all the others who are Proclaiming the word of God around the world in these days. These are difficult days to be a true teacher of the word of God. So uh, let's, let's lift all of the, the pastors and preachers and ministers of the word of God that are uh, holding true to the faith. Uh, but let us lift them up in prayer. Um, and also, uh, you know, just uh, continue to remember those that are sick around our churches and our families. We have a lot, to, a lot of folks to pray for in this but uh, with all that said, I, I hope the, the Lord will uh, keep you and hold you in the palm of his hand and continue to bless you as you move forward uh, toward that uh, goal of uh, living a, a righteous life. Uh, just always let that be your goal. Always keep moving forward. And in those times when you stumble, just, just keep moving. Don't, uh, don't fall. God won't let you fall. He'll, he'll lift you up. But uh, just keep moving forward. Keep working toward that goal of uh, spiritual perfection. And one day, uh, Paul promises you here, we will achieve that goal. Until next time, friends, the Lord bless you.